reason. Secure the bridge. Clean up your mess. I will be waiting for you when you are done. Hey guys, it's Brickman117. Welcome back to the channel and my review of the Mega Constructs Halo set Banished Phantom. Or at least that's what I would be saying if this was an official set. Unfortunately, there is currently no Banished Phantom set available from Mega Constructs, but we've all got our fingers crossed that sometime in the future we will see a Banished Phantom from the company. Until then, we're going to have to make do with my own creation. So I'm going to run through this overview video like I would a review if it was a legitimate set. So I've thrown some figures in that I felt were well suited to the set. We're also going to do some comparisons with the Pelican inbound and I'll run you through all the interior features and all of the outside design. So let's get into it. First things first, we'll take a very quick look at the figures I would choose to come with this set. So we've got a Grunt Conscript, we've got a Grunt Assault, we've got a Brute Warrior at the front, we've got two Elite Ultras and then we've got a pair of banished hunters because I know how you guys feel about having hunters in pairs. That's just my personal choice. Putting figures there was just a bit of fun to be honest with you just to make it look a bit more like a complete set. I will show you some of these figures inside the Phantom later on. So I'm sure you guys would have your opinions on what you would put with this set so by all means let me know what figures you think should come with this set in the comment section below. Next up we'll take a look at the Phantom sat alongside the official Pelican inbound set released earlier on this year. After all I did create the Phantom as a counterpart to the Pelican to be used in future dioramas so I needed it to scale to the Pelican relatively well. As you can see it's quite a bit larger height wise but width wise it doesn't exactly dwarf the Pelican and length wise there's not a great deal in it. So there you have them sat alongside each other. Now although the Phantom and the Pelican aren't perfectly scaled together and some of the Phantom's dimensions are definitely off it was very tricky to build I am satisfied enough that when I use this Phantom in my next diorama video, which will be the Awakening the Nightmare diorama that you saw advertised at the beginning of this video, I'm relatively confident that once it's set into that scene, it will do a good enough job of betraying a banished Phantom very convincingly. And I just want to clarify again at this point that this is not a replica of the Halo Wars 2 banished Phantom or that of the Halo Infinite banished phantom it is a mock i decided to take the elements of both of those ships that i liked the most and create my own design of banished phantom obviously it's similar i wanted it to be recognizable as a banished phantom but there are many things that aren't seen on either of those phantoms simply because I wanted to add my own touch. In regards to how accurate it is to either of those ships, there are many aspects to this mock that I'm not happy with and they are a compromise. In fact, the entire mock is one big compromise that spawned from available parts. You don't get to choose your parts and then order them online. You have to build with what you have available. So yes, if I had the freedom of no parts restrictions, there are many things that I would do differently and I'm sure could be improved but 
given what I had available, this was about the best I could do. Another aspect of the mock that could be improved upon is its robustness. I took the ship home on the weekend for my nine-year-old daughter to give the play test to, and while she thoroughly enjoyed seeing it and playing with it, it wasn't long before various bits started to drop off. As I say, this is a mock. It's not gone through all the rigorous tests that a official set would have to go through to make sure it stays together. The silver talons come out of the back they do tend to come off easily the main engine thrusters are clipped in and although they are relatively well secured you can still pull them off although they do come off in one piece so not the end of the world to pop them back on and then finally the troop bay doors although they look very nice folding down in these stop motion scenes when you do open them you do have to be careful other than that the set on a hold is relatively solid you can pick it up swoosh it around and there's no real fear of anything falling off as you can see by these shots here i also invested quite a lot of time and part into the underside of the phantom now although when this mock is sat on a shelf you don't often get to see the underside when you're playing in game the most you see is the underside as these things drop down from above and pile troops out on you so it made sense to me to try and get the underside of this phantom as nice as the top side of the phantom so when viewed from below you can clearly see the gravity lift exit hole you can also see the thrusters and some of you may also have noticed there is a chin mounted gun in the underside of the cockpit area as well so I'll show you that shortly but on a whole the underside was actually quite a lot of work so I'm relatively pleased with the way it's turned out especially when you view it on the turntable like this as this is the first time I've actually seen it from below as well and so finally before we move on to the interior here's a very quick stop motion of the chin gun operating up and down as you can see it can come down it can be turned left to right and elevated into almost any position and once it's stowed back underneath the cockpit it almost disappears into the lines of the ship Moving on to the interior, you can see the cockpit area is easily accessed by simply pivoting the roof section forward on a hinge piece. You can then just simply detach it so it's out of your way for putting figures in or photography use, as you'll see shortly when I show you some shots of the interior. To gain access to the troop bay, the entire roof section just comes off. It's not clipped in at the front, it's just clipped in by four studs on the back end of those black slope pieces. Once these sections are out of the way and the doors are open, you now have complete access to every part of the Phantom's interior. When it comes to the interior of the Phantom, I decided to use full artistic license just simply because it was more fun for me to build that way. So starting with the cockpit, you can see I decided to use a hard light shield as a heads up projection display for the pilot, which can simply be pivoted back and forward to allow the pilot to gain access to that seat. Just behind the pilot, I decided to put two display screens that would be used for strategy or navigation or anything, to be honest with you. I just like the idea of having two great big hollow screens either side of the hallway between the cockpit and the troop bay. I just thought it made a nice break or a nice addition in between those two areas. And as we move through to the troop bay, as you can see, there's plenty of room inside for lots of figures. The figures I chose to put in with this set comfortably fit inside the troop bay obviously you could shoehorn a lot more in but sometimes as i always say less is more so i've left it as it is for now somebody did ask if it could take hunters in the troop bay yes you can see two hunters do fit in they definitely have to bend down to get out of those doors and i don't think they'd make it down the gravity lift i think they're just a little bit too bulky but as you can see around the troop bay i've put various weapons racks holding all sorts of different weapons at the back you can see that i've tried to do a bit of detailing to resemble some kind of reactor for the gravity lift and then just to the side of it, I've got a small control panel, which is designed to be the controls for that lift. I also incorporated floor detailing wherever I could just to try and make that a bit more interesting too. On a whole, I'm relatively pleased with the interior. I'm sure I could do more or tweak it in the future, but for a first time round, I'm pretty satisfied. 
So that just about covers everything I wanted to show you with the Banished Phantom. It has been a very enjoyable build and hopefully you guys that have followed along with the build process on the speed build videos have enjoyed watching me put it together. As always, if you have any thoughts on it, please leave them in the comments section below. Don't forget to like the video if you've enjoyed it. If you've got any recommendations for what you'd like me to build next time, then by all means, you can leave those in the comments section below. But until then, as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.